All right, it's 4.30. Thank you all for being here. Um, this is Prometheus on Open Telemetry, Better Together, and we're really excited. So before we start, a couple of brief introductions of ourselves. Yes, hello. My name is Adriana Villela, and I am a CNCF ambassador. I am a uh, HashiCorp ambassador, a blogger, podcaster, my day job is as a senior staff developer advocate at ServiceNow Cloud Observability, the artist formerly known as LightStep. Um, by night, I like to climb walls. And fun fact, I really love capybaras, as you can see from my t-shirt. And I am Reese Lee. I'm a senior developer relations engineer at New Relic. I work with the inimitable Adriana on the OpenTelemetry End User Working Group where we are focused on connecting end users to each other through events and enablement content. And we are also focused on creating a feedback loop between end users and maintainers to help improve the project and drive adoption. And my fun fact is I love anything spooky and paranormal. So, open telemetry and Prometheus. They both help us monitor the health and uh, performance of our distributed systems. They're both CNCF open source projects, but what role do they each play in observability? So OpenTelemetry, or OTEL for short, is a vendor neutral observability framework and standard for um, generating, processing, and exporting data. Prometheus has been a fixture of the observability landscape for years. It's widely relied upon um, by many organizations for monitoring and um, alerting. And both Prometheus and OpenTelemetry whoops, um, generate metrics, but the topic of similarities and differences between OpenTelemetry metrics and Prometheus metrics is a vast topic. It deserves its own session. What we're going to talk about is how these two projects support each other, and we're going to show you how we're going to show you the interoperability between these two projects. So while you can, uh, you can use Prometheus to monitor a wide variety of um, application infrastructure metrics, the piece that we're going to focus on is Kubernetes monitoring. So, um, oh, and that's because it's arguably one of its most wide use, one of the widest use cases. Um, that's why we're going to be focusing on that. So first, we're going to start by learning about a few open telemetry collector components you can use to collect Prometheus metrics. Um, next, we'll talk about the target, uh, target allocator and how it can be used for sharding and Prometheus service discovery, followed by a demo. Then we'll talk about some additional open telemetry components you can use to collect um, Kubernetes data. And finally, we will do a wrap up where we'll talk about some of the pros and cons of the setup that we demoed um, and also talk about some of the stuff that Prometheus um, is doing on their end. So let's learn about Prometheus metrics with OpenTelemetry. As a brief refresher, the OpenTelemetry collector is a vendor neutral standalone service. It's used for ingesting data, uh, so receivers. You can transform that data with a number of processors. So you can do stuff like filtering, redacting, um, sampling, batching. And finally, you can use it to export your data to multiple um, backends of your choice. So for example, you can use, oh, I almost forgot. <laughs> There's additional functionality. Um, you can also use connectors as well as um, health check extensions. So you can use, for example, Prometheus SDKs to generate metrics, ingest them with the open telemetry collector, and then do processing as applicable, and then forward them to your backend. Before we get too far, um, let's also do a brief refresher on Prometheus. So for those that are less familiar with Prometheus, it, is, it encompasses uh, many things, including a server and a data format. So the Prometheus server collects metrics from targets defined in a configuration file, with target being an endpoint that exposes metrics for Prometheus server to store. Prometheus data is stored as a dimensional time series, meaning that it has attributes and a timestamp. 
So let's also talk a little bit about how Prometheus and OpenTelemetry are different. OpenTelemetry is primarily focused on the instrumentation piece, so it does not come with a backend. You still have to forward that data onto a um, observably backend for storage, querying, alerting, and so on. And on the other hand, Prometheus provides a time series data store you can use for your Prometheus metrics. In addition to instrumentation clients, um, you can also view graphs and charts, query and set up alerts using its web UI. And it also encompasses a data format known as Prometheus text-based exposition format. Um, I should also note that OpenTelemetry also generates uh, traces and logs, whereas Prometheus is for metrics. So those are kind of the more high-level big differences. So getting back to the OpenTelemetry collector components, we're going to start with the Prometheus receiver. This component allows you to collect metrics from any software that exposes Prometheus metrics. It serves as a drop-in replacement for Prometheus to scrape your services. Um, it also supports the full set of configurations in scrape config. And if you're interested in exemplars, which is a recorded value that associates open telemetry context with a metric event, you can use this um, receiver to ingest them in the Prometheus format, convert it to OTLP format, and that allows you to correlate uh, your traces with metrics. For exporting your metrics from um, the collector to Prometheus, you can use, so you have two options. One of them is the Prometheus exporter which allows you to ship data in the Prometheus format. It is used to report metrics via the Prometheus scrape, HTT endpoint. However, because all the metrics are sent in a single scrape, um, it means the scraping won't really scale. And we can take a look at kind of why. So this is the architecture um, when you use this exporter taken from the very helpful Grafana blog post. And as you can see, all the metrics that are exposed by multiple apps are exposed in a single endpoint. So this means it's exposing a huge amount of data, which makes scraping inefficient because the load is not evenly distributed across time, but there's a huge ingest spike at every scrape interval. Also, if you try to load balance the OTLP requests among a pool of collectors, um, it's likely that the metrics are gonna be available in every single collector, so that also makes scraping hard as well. You can use the Prometheus Remote Write Exporter instead. So this will help you get around the scaling issue, and we'll look at um, what the, infra the architecture looks like in a second. Um, but it allows you to push data to Prometheus from multiple collector instances with new issues. Additionally, since Prometheus accepts Remote Write um, ingestion, you can also use this exporter if you're generating open telemetry metrics and you want to ship them to a backend that is compatible with uh, Prometheus Remote Write. So here's what the architecture looks like with the Prometheus Remote Write exporter. And now I'm gonna turn it to Adriana, who's gonna teach us about the target allocator. Awesome, thank you. Okay, target allocator. Well, here's the deal. Prometheus, we love it, but it's not perfect. It does have its fair share of challenges. So for example, um, it experiences some challenges when it comes to things like performance and uh, resource allocation of uh, resource usage, especially when we're starting to increase the number of metrics that are being consumed. Now, one way to get around this is through sharding, where we basically have a number of Prometheus instances uh, that basically each instance has a set of metrics that it's going to ingest based on a set of rules. Awesome, but it, that, it has its own fair uh, set of challenges. So for example, we have a um, problem with, uh, with resource. It can be resource intensive. So for example, um, if you wanna do the sharding thing, it means that you need, say you have um, three Prometheus uh, workers. 
Now, in order to manage this, you do need a management instance of Prometheus. So now you've got four instances because you've got your management instance. On top of that, say, um, say you have, so basically your management instance requires as much memory as the combination of your worker instances. So for example, if you have three workers and they're all combined total using 300 gigs of RAM, then your, um, your, main, your uh, management instance requires 300 gigs of RAM as well. So now all of a sudden you've doubled your memory requirements, which can be a little problematic. Now, if you want to avoid that, you just pare down to one single Prometheus instance, your memory requirements have halved, but now you don't have the, uh, uh, you don't have the resiliency that you would have from having multiple Prometheus instances. So now another area where it can be challenging is with uh, even distribution of targets. So by default, Prometheus will scrape targets regardless of whether or not they are dropped. So that means that, say, we have three Prometheus instances. Now, say each one of them uh, scrapes 500 targets, but one might drop all targets except 10. One might drop half of its targets, and one might drop none. So now you have this uh, imbalance in terms of who, what's being ingested by each instance. So, sad panda, what do we do in that case? Well, fortunately, we have Prometheus, sorry, we have the Otel target allocator to the rescue. And you might be wondering, okay, what is the Otel target allocator? So, the target allocator does a few things for us. For, well, so first of all, it is a part of the Otel operator, but what is the Otel operator? So the Otel operator does a few things. One is collector management. So it manages the deployment of collectors, but it also manages the configuration of a fleet of collectors through the op-amp. So there is op-amp integration. And we also have another component of the OTEL operator, which is auto instrumentation management. Now, for the purposes of this talk, we're going to be focusing on the part that really talks about uh, managing the deployment of collectors. And this is supported by a custom resource in the operator called the Open Telemetry Collector Custom Resource. And the target allocator is part of this. So this basically means that the target allocator is only available via the OTEL operator. So even though it is a part of the OTEL collector, it's only via the operator. So what is the target allocator? Now the target allocator, what it does is it decouples the service discovery and metric collection functions of Prometheus. Where we have the collector, which manages Prometheus metrics without requiring us to install Prometheus, which Reese alluded to earlier, we have the target allocator, which then manages the configuration of the collector's Prometheus receiver in some cases. So then the target allocator basically serves two functions. We have the even distribution of Prometheus targets, and we have the discovery of Prometheus custom resources, uh, Prometheus operator custom resources. Now let's dig in into each of these to see how they work. Now I have to admit, I was kind of scared of the target allocator when I first heard of it. Um, but you know what? Once you see this, you'll be like, oh, cool. Okay, so how does it work? First we have the target allocator and it goes out to see, okay, what metrics are available for scraping? And then it goes, hey, what collectors are available to scrape metrics? Then it decides which collectors scrape what metrics. So then the collectors go to the target allocator and go, cool, um, can you tell me what metrics I'm supposed to scrape? And finally, the collector goes and scrapes those metrics. Once I figured that out, I'm like, oh my God, it's not so scary. Now, um, I want to do a little bit of level setting because if you're new to Prometheus, like I am, targets and scrapes, like what? So a target is basically an endpoint that supplies metrics for the Prometheus tool to store. And then a scrape is essentially the action of collecting metrics through HTTP request from a targeted instance, parsing the response and ignoring, sorry, ingesting the collected targets, to, uh, collected samples to storage. Now let's look at the other functionality of the target allocator, which is the discovery of Prometheus operator custom resources. Now, in particular, we care about two custom resources. We have the pod monitor and the service monitor. And these are part of the Prometheus operator. And essentially what they do is they say, okay, if a pod or a service matches the set of criteria, we're going to scrape metrics from them. 
So then you have the target allocator, which will discover the uh, Prometheus operator custom resource. So go into your Kubernetes cluster and say, okay, um, are there any pod monitors or service monitors around? Cool. Then we'll add the job to the target allocator scrape configuration. So we convert that information into uh, Prometheus scrape configurations for the target allocator. And then finally, the target allocator goes and says, okay, my collector buddies, these are the scrape configurations that I am going to distribute to you so you can scrape these metrics. All right, so now that we've got the theory, let's talk about this in practice. So um, we're going to do a little demo. It is not a live demo because I don't believe that live demos ever work out for me. So it's pre-recorded, but it's live narrated. Um, the application is a simple Python application. It's made of, of a couple of services, but we're going to focus on one in particular. It is basically a Python app that emits Prometheus metrics to be ingested by an OTEL collector. And with the help of the target allocator, it is going to then um, emit these metrics as OTLP metrics just to the collector's standard out. So we'll be using the logging exporter. And because the, we are using the OTEL operator for this, we're gonna be running this lovely setup in Kubernetes. So um, I'm going to be running basically the, so the open telemetry collector custom resource. Um, when, when you deploy that to Kubernetes, it basically spins up um, an OTEL collector and a target allocator. And I've just said, okay, we're gonna run this in a namespace called open telemetry. You can call it Bob, doesn't really matter. And also our little Python app is going to be running in that same namespace. The um, open telemetry operator runs in its own namespace, which is um, open telemetry operator system. So let's dig into some of the code that is going to make this happen. Over here, you have what is a sample piece of code for the open telemetry collector custom resource. And if you scan this QR code, you can see what all of these different attributes mean. I'm going to focus on uh, some very specific ones. So first we have our namespace. So as I said, this thing is running the open telemetry namespace. Next, we have our mode. So the open telemetry collector can run in four modes. We have deployment, sidecar, daemon set, and stateful set. Now, the target al if you wanna use the target allocator, it runs on all the modes except for sidecar. Um, now, in addition to that, we have our target allocator configuration section and this bottom part, which if it looks familiar, it's because it's the OTEL um, collector config YAML. Now moving on to zoom in a little bit more. Um, so as I said, this is the target allocator config section, and it's not just a matter of just popping it into your open telemetry collector CR and away you go. You actually have to enable it. And on top of that, because the target allocator is responsible for basically creating those Prometheus scrape configurations um, for the Prometheus receiver, the Prometheus receiver needs to be made aware of the fact that the target allocator exists. And so we have to define, uh, we have to specify the endpoint for the target allocator. Now, the way that that endpoint uh, is uh, expressed is basically the name of our um, open telemetry collector uh, instance, instance, plus the dash target allocator suffix to give us this. Next, um, if we want to be able to use the Prometheus custom resource discovery, we have to enable that explicitly um, with this little bit of code. All right, so now if we want to enable the Prometheus custom resource uh, service discovery, then uh, we need you know, to define either a pod monitor or a service monitor or a combination of both. In this case, we are defining a service monitor and the service monitor works as follows. So I'm saying here that I'm looking for services that match this label. And if you look at the, uh, the service definition over here, you can see that yes, my service has this label. On top of that, um, this is optional, but you can say, okay, the service must also reside in this namespace. And I'm going to be scraping metrics from any service that matches the label, the namespace, and also has a port definition that is called prom. And we're going to be scraping this every 15 seconds. Now, on top of that, if you want to use the target allocator at all, you don't 
only enable it, you also have to set up um, some permissions for it. So one of the things that you have to do is set up a service account. Now the service account gets created for you automatically. So you don't actually have to specify one. If you leave it out, basically it's the combination of our hotel collector um, CR instance dash uh, collector. So if you leave it out, it still gets created. However, you still have to assign the permissions that you want. So you still have to do a cluster role binding and a cluster role. And we'll look at that shortly. So this is an example of our service account that we're creating. If you scan this QR code, you can see an example of this, uh, the service account and cluster role binding definitions on the um, hotel target all allocator readme. Um, so this is our service account. And then over here, we have our cluster role definition. Now, two notable things. Um, over here, first thing, these are the permissions that you need in order for the target allocator to work, period. You don't have that, target allocator, no work key. In addition to that, um, if you want to do the Prometheus CR discovery, you also need these permissions. Now, you can make these as part of the same cluster role binding, uh, sorry, cluster role or separate cluster roles, it's all good. As long as they're both bound to the same service account and cluster role binding, you're good. And speaking of cluster role binding, we bring it all together by associating our service account to our cluster role, and voila, we are good to go. So now we are ready to actually see the real demo, live narrated by me, pre-recorded. So um, before I start, um, I do want to mention that if you want to play around with this, um, we have the repo publicly available and we'll provide a QR code for you to scan afterwards. Um, and you can run this in GitHub code spaces so you don't have to pull your hair out trying to get this to run locally because that's always a nightmare. Um, okay, so here we go. We are starting first with running the, uh, starting up our GitHub code spaces. And it's starting up, doing its thing. And now we're going to be installing Kind or Kubernetes in Docker. Um, pretty lightweight Kubernetes distro, runs in code spaces, extra bonus. So we'll be installing that. I've got basically a little script that's gonna run. And once it's done installing, little hamster wheel going. Then we're going to just make sure that our Kubernetes node was created successfully. Always kind of a shock if that stuff doesn't get created properly. And to just make sure that the pods uh, that we need for Kubernetes to work are actually running. So we're all good. Now we're ready to start installing uh, things on our cluster. So the first thing that we want to do is install the Prometheus custom resources. Now you don't have to install the entire Prometheus operator in order to get this thing to work. You can actually just pull the um, surface monitor and the pod monitor custom resources directly um, from the Prometheus operators uh, helm chart. And I believe uh, we have a blog post where we talk about this, which we link to later. So give you all you need to know to do that. So once that's been installed, now we have to install Cert Manager, which we're doing right now. And Cert Manager is a prerequisite for installing the Otel operator. You don't have Cert Manager, Otel operator will get mad at you, won't install. And after installing Cert Manager, we just wanna make sure that the pods related Cert Manager are up and running. And shortly they will be all good. There we go. Finally, we're ready to install the hotel operator. And again, just checking to make sure that the, uh, the pods are up and running for the hotel operator. Here we go. We're just, okay, we are ready to go. Perfect, so now we're going to build our services, just do a Docker Compose build. Um, and once we do that, we are going to load them in kind. Um, I'm not doing anything fancy like running a local Kubernetes registry or, or anything. There's a, a command in kind called kind load, loads it into kind and your images are available for use, which is awesome, saves a lot of work. Once these are installed, we're going to deploy in a minute, but I do wanna show you really quickly um, our service monitor definition, which should look familiar because it's similar to what we showed earlier, um, where basically we are matching on this label app, my dash app. And we are looking for uh, endpoints with basically service names with, with these names. And now we should be ready to deploy our application. Now, 
don't mind those warnings because um, that was like a little buggy thing that was happening with the hotel operator before, but it's basically checking to make sure that you have, um, that you've defined your open telemetry uh, collector CR properly. Um, so we've deployed our, um, all of our uh, resources. You notice that the collector is showing crash loop back off. Don't panic, totally did the first time. It does eventually sort itself out. Um, if it doesn't within a couple of minutes, totally panic, but it does sort itself out. Now we're tailing the collector logs to make sure that things are getting processed. And as you can see, lovely things are happening. This version here where we're pulling up the, the logs, basically we're just pulling up anything that starts with name colon because there is something in particular that we are looking for, which I'll point out in a sec. So I'm looking for something called sum underscore counter because that is the Prometheus metric that we created in our Python code, which I'll show in a sec. So I'll open that up in a minute. Okay, so this is our Python app and you can see we defined this thing called sum counter. It got scraped by the collector and it showed up in standard out. So yay, <laughs> I knew that it was going to end favorably. <laughs> also, whew, um, I know we're still in the middle of our session, but I am so impressed with all the work that Adriana did on the target allocator. And actually some of the stuff that she discovered is now part of the open telemetry docs. So be sure to check out the docs for more information and definitely come to Adrian if you have any questions about the target allocator. Um, meanwhile, I'm just gonna chat a little bit more about some additional open telemetry collector components you can use um, for monitoring Kubernetes, metri Kubernetes metrics, not singular. Um, we won't spend too much time um, on this section particularly, but we have um, the Kubernetes cluster receiver, you have Kubelet stats receiver um, for collecting specific metrics, and there's a few examples um, of metrics that are collected by these receivers. There's also the objects receiver, um, which collects objects from the Kubernetes API server, but there's also some other components that are not just Kubernetes specific that you might find useful. Um, so you have the host metrics receiver as well as the file log receiver that you can use as well. So for processing data, this component, the Kubernetes attributes processor is considered one of the most important for monitoring Kubernetes with OpenTelemetry because it adds Kubernetes context, which allows you to correlate your application telemetry with your Kubernetes telemetry. You can also use this processor to set custom resource attributes um, for your traces, logs, and metrics using the Kubernetes labels and annotations that you've added to your pods and namespaces. There's a few more collector components that we didn't cover here um, specifically, but that you might also find useful um, that aren't necessarily Kubernetes specific. So the batch processor, memory limiter, as well as the resource processor, but there's also many more um, that you might find useful for your specific use case. So to wrap up, let's look at some of the pros and cons of the setup that we covered for you today, specifically um, in Adriana's awesome demo. Also being able to narrate something that is recorded, like keeping with the time is also pretty it's not easy, so just wanted to point that out. Um, so starting with some of the pros, for one, not having to maintain Prometheus as your data store means less infrastructure overall to maintain, particularly if you go with an all-in-one observability, observability backend um, to ingest your open telemetry data. Not having to maintain the Prometheus operator is another uh, benefit. You still have to maintain the service monitor and the pod monitor, but it's a lot less work than keeping the operator up to date. You will also be able to have a full open telemetry solution while still obtaining your Prometheus metrics. Additionally, since open telemetry is a, um, an observability framework, you also get uh, traces, logs, and I think soon profiling very soon as well. Oh, and it also supports correlation of um, signals, so you can correlate your logs to your metrics, uh, sorry, logs to traces, metrics to traces. Um, and as we just learned, OpenTelemetry provides multiple tools you can use, such as the target allocator, the various collector components, as well as the collector itself, 
um, to provide more flexibility for your deployment and configuration options. So for the cons, of course, as with any new tool, there's going to be a steep learning curve, especially if you're newer to observability in general or you're just not familiar with open telemetry concepts, workflows, um, components. Additionally, if you are used to using PromQL, which is Prometheus's uh, query language, you may have to learn a new query language if your backend does not support PromQL specifically. Open telemetry itself contains many moving parts. Um, it has its own challenges with scalability and um, adoption, so that's also something to consider. And the various parts of open telemetry are still in various stages of maturity, um, from language to language, um, component to component, whereas Prometheus has been around for a long time and has a pretty mature ecosystem. Of course, um, there's likely going to be a need for additional computational and human resources to manage these components as there is going to be with just about anything, but that is something to consider depending on the complexity of your open telemetry infrastructure. And finally, managing and maintaining both Prometheus and open telemetry components is going to obviously introduce operational complexity um, and everything that goes along with that. So we've mainly been focused on how OpenTelemetry supports Prometheus, but there's also been a lot of work from the Prometheus folk to support OpenTelemetry as well. So that's what we're going to talk about here. So Prometheus maintainers have been working to strengthen the interoperability between the two projects um, to make it easier for Prometheus to become the backend for OTLP metrics. And so Prometheus accepts OTLP. And soon you'll be able to use Prometheus to, oh, sorry, Prometheus exporters to export OTLP. And finally, they are also working on adding Delta temporality support. Um, it's something that is available um, in OpenTelemetry right now and it has its own use cases. So they are working on a component that can do this. And you can learn more about what the lovely Prometheus folks are doing by going to uh, by scanning this QR code. And that is it. Not all images are created by humans. In addition to being an, uh, the target allocator expert, Adriana is also a prompt engineer expert. Um, she was the one that put together all these lovely sloth images for you. So thank you so I much. I had fun with that. <laughs> it, yeah, we hope you had enjoyed them as much as we did. And... <laughs> And just a final slide for y'all before we uh, before we go. Um, if uh, I, I encourage you to check out my podcast that I do with my daughter, it's called Geeking Out. Scan the QR code. I've had past guests such as Kelsey Hightower, Charity Majors, and Reese. Um, also, come find us at the Hotel Observatory booth. We're near the GitHub booth. It's not um, labeled properly in the map. So yeah, come find us. Come ask questions. Come Hotel with us. And if you have signed up for the new Relic party that we're hosting with Docker, Pulumi, and Tailscale, please come early um, to make sure you can get in. I think it's full, so please show up early and come hang with us or go to the Hotel Observatory. Thank you. Thank you.